Hey guys, so in this video, I will show you how to make better 3D print time lapses with the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini printer. I mean, the time lapses made by the A1 Mini itself aren't all that bad. It is certainly simple to set up. You just activate the time lapse feature in Bamboo Studio and the printer will do everything for you. However, your options are kind of limited. You have to live with whatever the camera on the printer delivers. What if you want to vary the angle of your shot? or shoot your time lapses in 4K or in different frame rates. There are surely a lot of ways you can do it, but this method works for me. And if you want to know how to do it, make sure to watch it till the end of the video. So before we start, here are the things that you'll need. A camera, a shutter release remote, super glue, double sided tape or just any tape, the mount, which consists of three parts, these studs here in various heights, and optionally, this small frame. So I happen to have this old DSLR camera that I don't necessarily use anymore. So I decided to use it to shoot my 3D printing time lapses. I first thought of using a micro switch to sort of trigger the shutter, and I actually had it all planned out. The problem is, I would need to get the switch, the soldering iron, the wires and everything, because I don't have any of those, and it will cost me around 50 to 60 bucks to get them. And at the same time, I also have this infrared shutter release remote for the DSLR camera. So I put the idea of using the micro switch on hold and try to make use of this instead. What I only needed to do was to figure out how to mount the remote on the A1 mini. Sure, I can just super glue the remote on the top cover of the X axis and I'm good to go. But what if I want to change the remote in the future? I didn't want the mount to be permanent. I want it to be removable and I want it to be able to change the type of remote at will. There were a lot of trials and errors and a lot of wasted filaments, but I finally decided to go for this design. It is super easy to mount and dismount. You can even change the holder of your remote control if you ever change the type of remote you have. Maybe you want to use this Bluetooth shutter release remote for your smartphone and make time lapses on your smartphone instead. You can surely make it work. So how to set it up? First, let's print the mount which consists of three parts. The lower part which attaches to the perch wiper, the upper part which attaches to the top cover of the x-axis, and the remote holder. Now you can even print the mount as one whole part if you want, but I've tried it so many times and failed, so that's why I decided to print them separately and just assemble them with super glue. So first, glue the lower part to the upper part. Wait for the glue to fully dry and carefully slide the lower part of the mount into the perch wiper and the upper part of the mount into the cover of the x-axis. It will just kind of snap into place. Now you need to figure out where to place the remote holder. Let's get back to that in a minute. Next, you want to print this small piece of stud. You need to mount this on the print head. The stud will be the one pushing the button on the remote, so you want the center of that push button to be in perfect alignment with the center of the stud. It does take a bit of eyeballing, guessing and some trials and errors to know where exactly to place it. And once you have that all figured out, super glue the holder onto the top part of the mount. To stick the stud onto the print head, you can use a double sided tape. But what I like to use is this small piece of blue tack. It sticks really well and I can easily remove it when I don't need it. Now you don't necessarily need this small frame here, this is just a guide that I stuck on there so if I ever want to replace the third, I just remove the one that's already on there and place the new one like so. So this is the stud that I use for my setup, but your setup might require a stud with different height, so you might want to print them in various heights. It needs to push the button when you set the print head all the way to the left, so start with the shortest one and then work your way up. The only thing that I haven't quite solved is to stop this from sliding backwards. The easiest solution for me right now is to use the tape. I mean, it's not the prettiest solution, but it works. Now open your project in Bamboo Studio and set the time lapse to smooth. This also means that your A1 Mini will automatically print a prime tower. You can deactivate it, but I recommend that you leave it on. Then set up your camera, hit print, and wait until it finishes printing the nozzle load lines and mount your remote immediately. If your project takes hours and hours to print, you should definitely get a dummy battery for your camera. And if you're feeling fancy, attach a mini fan on your camera to prevent it from overheating. 
On Mac, it is super easy to convert the pictures to a time lapse. Simply open QuickTime Player and select Image Sequence from the File menu. Select all the pictures, set the video quality, and hit OK. Now you have a time lapse video of your 3D print and ready to be edited in your favorite video editing software. One thing to note is this remote here is an infrared remote. The infrared signal needs a direct line of sight between the remote and the sensor of the camera for it to work, so you can't just place your camera anywhere you like. The remote won't trigger the shutter if I place my camera like so, since the print head is slightly in the way. So to solve this, I mount my camera upside down so the infrared sensor won't be completely blocked by the print head, or like so. So I hope this video will give you an inspiration on how to make time lapses with your A1 Mini Bamboo Lab printer. You can find all the links to the files and to the products in the description box below. And as always, make sure to hit the like button if you find this helpful, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.